The best way to learn Python or any other programming language is to build projects. Building projects, you'll learn a lot about the programming language. And that's what I attempted to do this morning. I attempted to build a subnet calculator app or a subnet calculator script and I failed miserably, but I learned a lot. I learned about floats. I learned about integers. I learned about strings. I learned about if else statements. I learned about for loops. I learned how to get input from the user. I learned a little bit more about the nuances of print statements and overall just syntax and how the terminal actually helps us to correct our errors, similar to how the Cisco iOS helps us to correct our errors, right? With the little markers, they show little markers where you have syntax errors and you have the opportunity to fix your code or your command. It actually shows you what line you need to fix. I think that's a great feature, especially for a beginner Python user like myself. Since I failed the subnet calculator app or script, I decided to move in another direction. I decided to create a sandwich calculator script. It's a very simple script that gets input from the user and then gives output based off of those inputs. Let's just get right into it. All right, here we are. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and open terminal in our Python script folder. This is where we're gonna have all of our Python scripts. And as I showed in other videos, there's a more complex way to navigate to the folder. I don't feel like doing it the more complex way. I like doing it the easy way. That's what technology is for, right? So I just went straight to the folder and I opened it up, right? And instead of creating a text document within the terminal, we're just gonna get, matter of fact, yeah, we're gonna do that, right? It's easier. Touch print pi dot pi, right? Nano print pi dot pi. We're just gonna create some basic script on printing different things like math equations and what else? Um, hello world, right? I like the text editor better. So let's start over. So we're gonna build a sandwich calculator, all right? And then again, we're gonna type in an office manager buys lunch for the office. He buys two sandwiches consisting of 12 slices each. There are six people in the office today. How many slices does each person get, right? Now, again, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define some inputs, right? So we're gonna ask the user, how many sandwiches are in the office, right? And I like to put a few spaces there because, you know, you'll see in a second, the output looks a little weird when you don't put in sufficient spaces. Slices, right? We're gonna define slices. Input, the input command, again, it gets input from the user. I think that's cool. Like that's, I got excited about that this morning. I'm like, oh, I can get, I can get input. We're closer to creating an app or something. Right, so how many slices per sandwich? Right, I like to put a few spaces. And then how many people are in the office? More input. So we're gonna use these three pieces of input to calculate our um, total of slices each person gets, right? So input. 
how many people are in the office today? Question mark, a few of those spaces. And then now what we're gonna do is typically Python has defined input as strings, right? So what we have to do is we have to type typecast the input from the user as a float. And you'll see why it's, we have to typecast it as a float in a second. Well, the reason why is because we're gonna have division somewhere down the line in the, in the code, right? So we have to typecast it as a float. Or at least I believe that's how it goes. I think when I try to do it with um, with an integer, it wouldn't allow me, because by the very nature of division, you're gonna get a float. You have a high chance of getting a float if the numbers, you know, um, are calculated in a specific way, right? So if you if you end up getting like a decimal or whatever, that's a that's a float, right? So we have to typecast the input that the user is gonna give for sandwiches in the office, right? So sand is equal to float sand, which makes sense because we are taking sand, which is right here. Let me just highlight it. I know you can't see my, can't see my mouse on the screen. And we're taking that and we're defining it as a float right here, right? right there now let's move on slices we're gonna do the same thing because we have to define all of these in the correct type and people if we don't I think we're gonna get an error people right so now that we did that we have to define another variable if you will which is the amount of food that each person is going to get and this is ultimately it is ultimately um going to be def defined by sandwich times the slices the amount of sandwich times the amount of slices right so here we go and my chair is all jacked up so we're going to take the amount of food equal amount of sandwiches times the slices, right? That's gonna be the total amount of food in the office, right? It's gonna be a ton of food in the office. And we want to take that food and divide it equally amongst, how many people were there? Six people. So this is where our division is gonna come in. But before we even do that, we have to now typecast the amount of food as a float, that way, Python calculates it correctly with no issues, right? So now we're gonna take amount of food is equal to float, amount of food. And I know this is not elegant code for you people that are advanced Python programmers. Definitely drop a comment and let me know if there's a more efficient way for me to do this. I'm still learning. So now we have the amount of food that's defined and we have it set as a float so that we can calculate this correctly, right? Now we are going to have slices per person, right? Slices per person is going to be equal to float amount of food divided by people right now we also have to define the slices per person as a float or typecast it as a float so now we have sl slpp equal to float slpp and then now we're going to want to print that we want to print the slices per person right print SLPP, right? 
Not elegant by any means, but look, just starting out, right? And again, if you have a more efficient way, comment down below and let me know because I definitely need to step my game up a lot. So sandwich, sandwichparty.py. Documents, Python, save that here. Now look how pretty this looks. I like all the colors. That's why I did, that's why I did it in a text editor. Also the text editor automatically starts a new line. In Nano, it would let you just write forever, right? So I like, I like a little assistance. So here we go. So we got it saved, now let's run it. And for some reason, I think maybe I'm typing this wrong. Let's see if I can navigate to it. It's probably not gonna work. It's probably not gonna work because every time I try to navigate to my folder, it won't allow me. I think I'm probably typing. Oh, it actually let me do, do it. Okay, Python three, what did we name it? Sandwich party, sandwichparty.py. How many sandwiches are in the office? There's two sandwiches and there are 12 slices and there's six people. Four, right? We got four sandwiches or four slices per person in the office, right? So that's my simple little Python script. Like I said before, if you are, if you're learning Python or if you're learning any other programming language, it is a good idea for you to try to build things, even it's even if it's as simple or simplistic as I just showed you just now. It'll help you to learn a lot of different syntax. You're gonna get a lot of errors and you'll learn how to navigate those errors, right? So that's pretty much that. Like, you know, let me show you a few little things that I found to be cool real quick. So now if I wanted to fool around with it and make some errors and go like this and then, you know, I hit save. Let's see what happens. See, it tells you, it literally tells you where your error is, right? It says line seven, and it tells you where your error is. That's what I like about this. I don't know if it's always been that way, but it says what, line seven. And then you can just simply correct it, right? See? Could not convert string to float. See, that's the thing. See, that's another thing. What if you don't enter any, you know, any values, right? What do we do in that case? Do we just, I guess, loop it back? Maybe there's a way to loop it back to the beginning or maybe just close it out or whatever. But either way, let's see what happens when you put pass. Let's see what happens. Let's see. See, this is the stuff that I like to do. I like to experiment. Nah, it doesn't really do nothing. Pass doesn't solve the problem. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Let me save it real quick. That's my first little script or serious script. And I call it serious because getting input from the users and trying to get all fancy with, uh, what's it called, type typecasting and stuff like that. But if I just keep doing this every day, every other day for the next year or so, I'm pretty sure I'll be fluent in Python. We'll see, we'll see where it goes. My main focus is to build network automation tools for my home lab and of course, you know, for when I go out to, you know, work at different companies and stuff like that. I wanna have these tools in my back pocket so that I can just, you know, build things real quick for a workflow or maybe to push some configuration. And there's some built-in Python tools for network engineers, which is pretty cool. I, I was doing some Googles and I found a few forums that were introducing or you know sharing some 
some, I guess, blocks of code or some built-in Python tools with other people who are trying to also build network engineering tools, right? So that's pretty much it. If you wanna see more Python videos, click right here and I'll talk to you guys next time.